Greg, I want to probe a little bit more about the reorganization that has been discussed because there's much chatter in the markets that there might be an IPO of the, the ride hailing business. And there was a feeling that given this environment, how challenging it has been in ride hailing, having a, another area of the business uh, being self-driving cars that requires such huge investments at this point, maybe it would be better to get rid of that uh, arm of the business and improve the financials before any IPO. Can you argue with that? Can you, can you tell us that it, it does improve the financials at this point and does it set you up a little bit better if you do want to proceed, uh, proceed with an IPO? So I think the, the purpose of the spin was, was not uh, targeted around IPO of the right hailing business, which is not something that we're currently pursuing. I'd say that actually the right hailing business has performed uh, really well uh, despite the pandemic. We've actually seen a pretty rapid V-shaped recovery in rides uh, so far. So if you, for example, look at you know uh, July or August or even September trends, we're actually seeing growth in terms of the number of rides and, and in terms of bookings. Uh, currently, our bookings are growing at almost 30%, which I think is extremely impressive. I, again, the focus of the spin out is more around putting more capital, putting more focus uh, behind it. Uh, also, obviously, increasing our ownership in this in this critical part of the business that we think is, you know, part of the legs of the future of Yandex uh, was extremely important. So more focus on the future and uh, not so much about, you know, is this com company kind of configured in the right way for a potential IPO? I want to get into the timing around self-driving cars. It reminds me of other tech trends we've seen. Uh, VR, for instance, when it came to the market, was going to completely disrupt entertainment. But, of course, that hasn't exactly happened. Same with self-driving cars. At every auto show, it's the, the number one theme. You put more money into this venture. But when can we actually see decent returns? Because it feels as though even though trends have accelerated with COVID, uh, for instance, you know, having someone in the car driving you, perhaps more people would feel comfortable if it was a self-driving car. Uh, a lot of companies, too, wanting to trim the costs of operations by not having drivers in cars. So how have these trends yeah. changed with COVID and when do you think you actually will get solid returns from this part of the business? So I actually think that it's not so much a question of uh, when we will get self-driving, um, but it's a question of where we will get self-driving. And importantly there, I think that when you talk about geofenced areas, areas where traffic conditions are simpler, whether it's because of weather or number of cars on the road, uh, you will have self-driving much sooner. So if you took a, uh, take a look at some of the places where we currently operate, we operate in certain towns in Russia, and currently we already have robo-taxi services running there. Now, clearly, it's going to take uh, a lot more time before we will get self-driving uh, in places like you know New York City during rush hour or Moscow during rush hour. So it's a question of when and where, uh, not if. What we're hearing from this partnership with Uber is that there's a huge global initiative to get self-driving uh, actioned at this point. But what we've seen behind the scenes in technology, huge fight playing out between the US and China for tech dominance. So clearly where some of the chips and components are sourced down the track could become an issue. Is that causing some concern as you try and plan for the future? So I think overall, if you look at kind of how self-driving cars are engineered, uh, it's, it's a combination of both hardware and software. And we're obviously focused on developing both. Uh, on the hardware side, we've actually been uh, marching forward and trying to develop our own LIDARs as opposed to just being dependent on industry supply. And obviously, all of the software is built in-house. And I think that's a critical part uh, of the platform that we're building. It's full ownership of the software stack, which is based on the whole Yandex ecosystem. And like I said, the many, many years of expertise in machine learning and AI that that's uh, brought to bear.